Miss Vanessa, can you go ahead with your question? Um, so um, earlier today, during a tutorial uh, question, I asked a question concerning definitions. Yes. Yes, so I want to clarify this from you. Go ahead. Please go ahead. I'm listening. Yes. Um, um, I, I, I used an example, which is an umbrella. So I said that an umbrella is an object or a device that is used um, during the rain, like used by most people during the rain. But then it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone uses the umbrella when it's raining. So I, I want to know under which definition it falls under. Under which- well, What is your question exactly? State it so that I can respond. Because depending on how you state it, it would, it would, the type of definition will change. Yes, I want to know which type of definition um, the umbrella will fall under since it is not prescribed to a particular thing. So the thing is, thank you very much. The thing is that the word umbrella is not a definition. So give me a definition so that I, we can place it for you. You understand? The word umbrella is not a definition. If I say, see what the girl is holding, that is an umbrella. Mm -hmm. We can think of that as a type of definition. The one that points to, you can think of it as a type of definition. Which type would that be? Um, Anybody? As ostensive. It's ostensive. Ostensive Ostent definition. Yes. Ostensive to ostentiate. So ostensive definition. You see that I said, see what she's holding. That is an umbrella. If I interpreted that as a definition, then it will be that type of definition which gives meaning by what pointing to. Yet I could give you another definition using the word umbrella. So I could say an umbrella is an object we use to cover whatever, and we used to block the rain mm. from touching us. Now I'm giving you def a definition again, but this time I'm not ostentiating. I'm not giving you an ostensive definition. I hope you can see that. Yes. yes. So, so, so depending on the definition you give me, we will place that oh, definition you under one. Yeah. OK. OK. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Welcome, Vanessa. Good. So that was on definition. Any other question, please? Please keep your hand up if you have a question. If there are no questions, then I, I will go quickly to attend to other things, okay? Because I'm here to engage your concerns that you have. It is an interactive session. I'm not here to redo the lecture. I'm not here to tell you what is already in, in your book either. You see, that is not the, the posturing for critical thinking. So we take a lot of time to engage the content. Even for you are lucky, you would have some of the interactive sessions even uploaded on the channel. If you go to the Dr. Nancy Miles GMP channel or the, the link, I, I think I circulated a link to you also. Then you locate the UGRC 150 playlist. If you go to playlist and go to UGRC 150, you get all the lectures. That it even helps you because you can always play back and, and listen to what was said. The slides are there. Are the resource tool for you also? Okay. So that there isn't a need to come and restate what has already been stated and stated. Something you can play back a thousand times. You know. So if you have done that, then you have engaged the lecture. Now we want to like question time. We just have finished delivering the lecture. Okay, Doc, please, what about this? Could you clarify this? That that, that is where, where we are now. Okay. So I'm giving time to hear from you and bring clarity to you if there is a need. If not, then we are good. We have the full house now. We don't anticipate any addition. So we are ready to open our assessment. The assessments are for learning. See, sometimes people always want to assess your learning. So we assess you off what you have learned. That is, that one tries to show what you don't know. But assessments are not always for that. 
Sometimes assessments are to help you learn. So they are for learning. And that is a better push. They assess you so you learn. So the content will guide your learning. The questions that are being asked of you will guide your learning whilst you earn a mastery. That's, that's more uh, Elena, Elena, uh, what Elena said approach than where we assess you, whether you know it's true. Where we assess the assessment is off your learning. And therefore, you need it concurrently. That's the point I want to make. You need to be working and learning, and the learning helps you to work, and the working helps you to learn and earn a mark. By the time we get to the third week, you should have had half of your mark down because you have been six weeks. Okay. So the delay of really uh, opening assessment is not good for you, the student. The assessment opening is not a punishment, it is rather to help you guide your learning. So you know that, oh, you need one, I've covered it. I didn't understand X, Y, or Z from it. So the kind of questions that were asked made me realize I don't need this one. So I made it better. That's why if week one is already gone and we are half into week two, it's not good that you don't have any mark out of the hand. You haven't earned anything yet. Or you haven't even seen anything that will die. If there is no question, there is no concern, you are good with unit one and two after the lecture. Please engage the test. This is your reference point. The test is the objective content from which all other. Then it's only one. No do any other. Asari Solomon, go ahead. Madam, please, my um, sorry, dog. My problem is on the um, open class concept. I need some clarifications, please. How do you understand, understand it from the lecture? Go ahead. It's fine. It's a good question. How do you understand the lecture delivered? What is an open class concept? Um, <laughs> it says that um, a word is open tested or essentially contestable if it has several connotations. And yeah. therefore, any given meaning can be contested even within the same discipline. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still finding it difficult to understand it very well. I'm like, <clears throat> when, when you take the, like the family and the justice and those things, I understand, um, I understand it in a way that we can use it as anywhere um, or at any time. But when it takes something like the mean and those things we were saying that they okay. only have one meaning, but I'm not getting the real meaning. That's why I want you to clarify okay. things. Okay, so how do you understand <clears throat> the open textedness of the word family? How do you understand that? When we say the word family is open text, you say you get that one. Yeah, uh, like every everybody can assign a meaning to it. They, they, their own everybody meaning. can assign or it means yeah. several things to different people. Yes, to different people. And yes. they all apply. They, they all are acceptable. Yeah. That, that is open textedness. So the word family, for, for, for person A, family will be someone that shares blood with them. For person B, family is someone that shares faith with them. When we go to church, we say my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Brethren. Right but they are not my mother's father. <laughs> hey, my mother's daughter also. Family. Some for some their dogs are more a family to them than even their children. Okay. Okay. So the word family could mean several things to several people, even in the same discipline. And there won't be any content. You can't, you can't uh, what's the point? You can't insist that it has to mean only this and not that. Okay, okay, you cannot. Okay. That is what we mean when we say that word is open texture. It is an open class concept. And we see that most of our words are like that. That's the, the point we make. Most of our words are open class because, especially in humanities and sociology and political science, uh, science and whatever, most of our words are open texture. They allow for different interpretations. So the word development, for some people, a developed nation is one that has high rise buildings. For another one, a developed nation is one that has moral, you know, um, what they, they keep morality as their priority. For others, 
A developed nation is one that can feed its people and stop borrowing. We can go on and on and on. So what it means to be developed, the word, the word developed is open class. It means different things to different people. Look at democracy. Everybody has their own definition of democracy. And when we say everybody has, doesn't mean that they, they just arbitrarily choose it. No. If not, then, then different people will have their own meaning of even number. And say that me, for me, I think that color red gram means uh, green. When I see a green book, me too, I think that it is red. That's arbitrary. You can't have your own meanings of ten. The one we are talking about, all the meanings apply. Look at the word sister. Sister. Oh, Munia. Oh, Munia. Oh, Munia. Munia, Munia. But it's not a brother or a father as him. Biological brother or father. But it's a brother or a sister. It's, oh, this is my friend. It's a brother. It's a brother, Charlie. When I go through difficult time, it's a brother. So when I say the, the word brother, friend, intelligent, uh, what's that? Some, for some people, intelligence means <laughs> being corrupt. I think your word, be intelligent, because he was able to outwit that. So if you look into the book, you will see that almost all our words are open text, open class, except certain group of words that we call closed concepts. Find them in mathematics. So you are dealing with some, something in unit two, I think. Yeah, except the words we find in uh, the didactic studies. You can have your own meaning to two plus three, for example. And when you go to the market, buy two, I've said all of that in the beginning, that two plus three for you is equal to 17. That is what you think two plus three should be. So when you go and you are going to be called a yogurt guy, say, give me two yogurts. One is one seed, you buy two. That's two cities. They say, we'll give the ladies two, one, one, and three ladies. So, you know, you bought five. And you tell the yogurt guy that's for you. If you buy two cities and you buy three cities in addition, you, you think it is still equal to one city. Because after all, we all have our own. You think you will survive, especially if you buy around a certain area. <laughs> they will discipline you big time. Because two plus three, doesn't have different, when you say two plus three, you can't have your interpretation. So you see that mathematical concept, I just use that, I don't know how it helps, but mathematical concept some aspect of physics, what I mean, where the study is a deductive one, their concepts are closed. They don't allow you to have your own uh, interpretation or meaning of the concept. That's why we call them, those concepts are closed. They don't allow for different viewpoints. Logic is like that. Buddhist opponent, you can't have your own meaning. Of but you can have your own meaning of what? Uh, uh, income. Income. There are so many examples. I, I hope that that should help my friend whose hand went up. Is there any other questions? Please. Thank you, madam. You're welcome, sir. Nobody is adding anybody to a WhatsApp group. We have given the link. I'm reacting to Miss Poma, my dear sister. Please go to the uh, course site. If you're a legitimate member, go to the course site and copy the WhatsApp group link, Un unless it is full. I don't think it should be full. Copy it and then just enter and you will be good, okay? Nobody's adding anybody. Otherwise, I'll take everybody off. I'll dissolve it, then we, we, we work alone. God will take care of us, okay? Ask now, people. Laminu Abdul Razak. And yeah, please go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Your hand is up, please. Abdul Razak, if you could kindly unmute. I don't know if you are speaking. You are muted, but your hand is up. Welcome, Ms. Poma. Otherwise, people will shortchange you, Ms. Poma. I see that. If the person doesn't mind, you can go to the site, you get access. Go ahead, sir. Right, good I can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead if you have a question, please. If not, any other person. So you should know. Yes, good morning. Good morning, sir. 
Madam, please, I said, can we see that most of the signs and coaches use when different concepts? Yes, it depends on which sign. There is deductive signs and inductive signs. We we'll learned that in unit seven. So okay. when you say signs, unless you mean the empirical studies, the inductive studies, okay. okay, then you can use that. But if you just say signs, blanket like that, something of mathematics as signs, as a deductive science, you take it from. So it's still a science, but it, it is working with proofs. So each system is closed. Okay. Like this is a situation like the issue of matter. Can we relate it to well-defined concept or open? What do you think? What do you think? Yes, please, madam. I said related to let's say definition of matter. Yeah, but maintain your money view. I can't hear some of the things you are saying. Definition of matter, matter. Yes, what do you think? I want to know what you think. The way I think I will relate it to well open class concepts. No, uh, it's fine. Because like most everybody has is like definition, the way you talk to it. Okay. No. I've heard you. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm working on something. So don't worry. I'm working on our posture as acad academics in the tertiary institution. The posture must change. Otherwise, we have a big problem as a nation. So Kaka and Kaka won't get there. Okay? The posture has to be, 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 be written. Not that thing like you're sitting there waiting for something to come. You know? So that's, that's what we are working at together. We'll do fine. Okay, is there any other question? Abdul Razak, Razak has asked this question. I don't see any. I'm a prince. Mm. I'm a prince. That is not important at all. Your 100% is still intact. You can always access your 100%. Okay. But I will reward effort. When people, I mean, if someone shows uh, whatever, I reward participation. It's part of the training. We want people to be able to express themselves, think of their head, you know, respond to practical problems of existence you know, extemporaneously. So when people show that brilliance, it is in my right to award that. It doesn't take from your, your right to have the full 100% still accessible to you, just in case you weren't present at the time. Okay. Few plus, don't press from point. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Um, doctor, please. Um, it's, I think you have a very faint volume. If you could just raise it a little bit more. Okay. I'm asking if a connotation of a chair is a furniture we sit on, then will its denotation be plastic chairs, wooden chairs, and wooden chairs? Exactly. You can point to the particular denotations. So plastic chair, the chair in my room, okay. uh -huh, those will be the denotation. So you denote them by the particular instance and you connote them by the description you give. Yeah. You see that I don't have any questions. The lecture did all the job. <laughs> so you have to test yourself if you really got it by engaging in some assessment. And since it is some work to do assessment, then we reward you for that. That's what opening assessment one, assessment two, and those things are. Okay. So we'll do some in the course of the week so that by the third week, you should have covered at least 20% um, of your final hundred. Is there any other question, please? Should we end? Okay, give a little time. I still see Theophilus's hand. Theophilus, is a second question. If not, then we are good to go. So I was saying that by the end of unit one, you were supposed to know 
the types of linguistic expressions, declarative, imperative, uh, interrogative. Then there's also the sentence fragment, uh, fragment and the emotive expression. Then those will complete it. All the entries there, you have to cover them up. Cover up, you know, value judgment, moral, value judgment, non-moral. Uh, what's the other one? Explicit, implicit meanings of words. So the expression presents itself as if it were a question, but then you see that the intention of the speaker is not a question. The introductory session I gave you, the video lecture, gave you some substance on why critical thinking. And I'm going to ask you a question on that. Like I told you last week, you will do practical, creative, uh, uh, you know, problem solving kind of questions for your assessment. Then you may top up with some MCQ for your final. Okay, so I need you to engage the lecture guided by the content, the, the test book, and then supported with interactive sessions like mine, and then the ones you can still have with your teas. And bring your quest. So there is nothing like a didn't know what to do. Okay. So that's for unit one. Explicit, implicit, interrogative imperative, declarative, the types of declarative, that is factual statement, value judgment, and what's the other one? Definitions, the types of definitions that now will take us into unit two. Why a factual statement need not necessarily be a true statement. When you say it is factual, it doesn't mean it is true necessarily. It just means it has objective, you, have, you can objectively ascertain whether it is true or false. That's what a factual statement means. Okay, we said that last time in the interaction. So those little, little bits you should know, the connotation, the notation, the parts of the definition, definiendum, definiens. What is the other thing? Then now slowly it leads us into unit two, where we looked at the types of definition, ostensive points to, operational gives you the steps to follow. What's the other one? Theoretical, it is actually a, a discipline on its own. So for you to understand that definition, you should have studied that discipline, say chemistry or something to understand what I stage to do. The whole chemistry, room temperature, you know, so hydrogen, two uh, molecules, hydrogen, one molecule or so, oxygen at room temperature. That is what H2O means. When you see H2, water is H2O on the board. It is a whole chemistry. I think eh, that you must know to understand that. That is not the same as saying that that is water, where I'm pointing, that is water. I'm still giving a definition of a kind, senses. You don't need to know hi uh, hydrogen and oxygen, whatever, to understand that. Then you go into the dictionary, the lexical definition, you go and see uh, what? Water is a colorless, odorless substance that has done blah, 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 blah. That's lexical. Sometimes the, the lexical becomes the, the one that is normally known. Now take note, and your textbook tells you that, and I think it's also in the slide, that they sometimes are overlapped. So one definition, I think that's what uh, Vanessa's, was it Vanessa? Vanessa Seals' question taught us. It showed us one definition could, could, could be both lexical and operational or, or ostensive, et cetera. So you have to be minded there as a critical thinker. It is not a cut and paste. The world is not white and black all the time. Sometimes some of the things are gray. You have to reflect. So I gave you some scenarios in the introduction. You have to reflect to make a decision, knowing very well that the consequences may not be pleasant. But compared to what will happen if you didn't do it, you take, you take that decision. So that's what we are training ourselves to become better. All of that, you need one. Then you need two stresses on the other ones I talked about. Well defined, your friends have asked questions on that to, to make the point. If you have any questions, I'll take now. Dennis Ankara, go ahead. Go ahead, Dennis. Um, and your, the difference between lexical and theoretical. If um, the definition is institutionalized, then obviously it should be in a dictionary because it's widely known. 
So I want to know the difference between the lexical definition and the theoretical definition. Okay, so your, your, your premise is not wholly correct. Some things may be generally known that are not institutional. Institutional means it has a, an authoritarian back. It is authoritative. So it's, some would want to say a jargon, an officialized jargon. When the logician, for example, says uh, argument, the technical way, the theoretical way, when I say argument as a logician, I'm not speaking argument as exchange of words, phantom, you know, insulting ourselves. That is how we use it generally. If the economy says demand or inflation, the economist is speaking a technical language. He's not talking about blowing balloon and, and letting it fly in the sky. <laughs> okay, so sometimes words may be general, but it doesn't mean it is institutionalized. So the one that has sometimes institutionalization is an academic one. Sometimes by fiat, they, they are the ones that we call okay, theoretical, theory based. Thank you. Fiat. So you see the overlaps again. By fiat, sometimes stipulate, we stipulate. I think that one is straightforward. We agree to use the word that way. That agreement could have been by legal backing or institutional backing. That's why even stipulated definition may overlap sometimes with theoretical definition. But think of it with examples. If I say water is H2O, it is an academic institution's definition of water. And by institution, I mean chemistry. You must know hydrogen. Imagine calling Yaya to bring you water whilst you are cooking food in the kitchen. Yaya, excuse me, not formally educated. And then you are telling her, bring me H2O. Yaya, I want H2O. The banku is burning. I want H2O. I mean, the banku will burn to ash. What is H2O in the kitchen? Uh -huh. But if we were at the lab and we were all discussing how we can uh, work on this. COVID thing, what I did. And I said, could you give me, how do you measure H2O? What I, could you give me an ounce of H2O and then, uh, you know, two kilograms of H2SO4 or NADL? At the lab, we will understand as a work because here we, there we are speaking technical. Okay, so that is the problem. So there, there are overlaps, but institutionalized need not necessarily mean the generally accepted. Uh, Ghana has a uh, now. I don't know if, if Dumso is in the dictionary yet, but it's generally accepted. The Dumsolism uh, of Ghana. All right, is there any other question, please? So you should know that for unit two, cover, I have the textbook and I'm going through it. The textbook was prepared with distance education in mind. So it, it gives you all the details, each unit, what you should know. It summarizes the unit, the learning outcomes, the learning objectives, so comprehensive. There's no way you should get anything below an A. The worst grade you should get is a B plus. And you can do it with just a little effort of your part. So tell me then, oh, there's a hand up. Yo, let me take Yakubu. Yakubu, please go ahead. Okay, madam. Um, based on the, uh, the distinction between the theoretical definition and the lexical definition, yes, can we also say that the lexical definition deals with, um, let's say, definition from dictionary, while the theoretical one deals with, um, let's say, practical um, um, definitions? Okay, so the first part can hold, but the second one I'm not sure. Because they can, oh, okay. yes, we can have very or, or, or technical definition. Like yes, technical like technicality is theory. Okay. Expert. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So whilst we are waiting for more hands to come up, let's try our hands on some of the exercises in the in the test book. If you have your your version, you can pick it. If you don't, not too good enough, but you can borrow from those who did it. It's the same test. You look at uh, the last. Just before we start definitions, you need to, you see that there's an activity there, unit one, revision activity two. And on top, they tell you that they are past questions. So it's worth uh, trying. Anyone who has the book can read for me, read the instruction there, please. Consider the following alternatives and classify them as one. 
definition or a statement that is true by definition to so definition. Then two, value judgment, that is by distinguishing the moral from the non-moral. Then three, factual judgment, four, sentence fragments, five, emotive expression, six, imperative, and then seven, interrogative. So I'll read them out and then you close. If you have a question, stop us because I'm just trying to engage us. Maybe it can bring clarity to some of the things you've done. When I say it is terrible to see reggae music commercialized for profit by corporations, what is it? Is it a statement? Is it a statement with type? Okay, so nobody knows and we'll skip it. Two, you have to go and learn it because I, you don't know, I may, I may ask you again. Two, no reggae, no reggae musician ever cuts his hair. Is that a statement or non statement? All right, so you can go through them to the end because it looks like you need some more time or well, you don't think that these are difficult, these are straightforward. You need two types definitions. I said that six types of definitions, well-defined words, versus their opposite, which is the open texture words that our friend helped us revise. Another word for open texture is essentially contestable terms. Then the problems that arise with definitions. When is a definition narrow, broad, circular, or big? Let me take you, have your take on that and then we'll be done. When is a definition described as circular? Nobody. When is a definition broad? Okay, Gerald, go ahead. Madam, Madam, please, a definition is considered broad when it covers more, no, it covers more than necessary. Maybe it covers some things that shouldn't be in the Definition. So the word things you can say is it has some denotations that are not legitimately belonging here. In other words, you have to, like you said, the, the denotation includes so many things. You are defining in a way that some denotations that don't belong to the denotation of that word will be included. Okay, very good. Thank you. Well done. That end your mark, Gerard. I'll take note of it. Then, when is the definition too narrow? Please. Sam. Oh, I'm sorry, that was Prince before. Let's take Sam, then we can take Prince. Sam, use your full name so that I can reward you well when I go to the five. Sam. Go ahead. Let me take for example then. Oh, madam, narrow is when you restrict the meaning you are giving to um, a subset. Very good. You are doing well. I think you guys are instead, uh, you folks, I should say, not guys, you, you folks are studying the content. That's good. If you do that, yeah, we won't have any headache. Because this one, you have to create, uh, kind of thing, get your A and continue. It's seen that people can be writing the same thing 17 times. Eh? The same idea 17 times. Why? <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Minus you, eh? So you will do your bit. Quick, 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 quick. You go and sit down, you write it, you get your age back, you continue with your philosophy or psychology or tissue or maths or law, medical school, something. Then you just move on. Boldly and confident. Okay. And while your hand just shut up again, is there a question? So Kusi first, and then now Amwa. When is a definition diagnosed? Remember, it's not something to be proud of. When we say you are too secular, or your, your definition was secular, it's not something to be proud of. It is a, a derogatory label. We are telling you that I didn't say anything. My friend will say, you didn't say nothing. <laughs> Why? Because you just repeated yourself. So you just repeated what we don't know in your explanation to give us what uh, the meaning. If you, do, if you do that, then 
He didn't do anything. Just wasted our ears, so to speak. <laughs> so the def definition being secular, narrow, broad. Narrow and broad, you are saying something by as a challenge. Secular, you are just repeating the definition in the definition. And when we advance into the other unit, you see that we have another label for secularity. What is it? I said that in the video. So you could, you could raise, your, raise your hands and earn a mark for it. If a definition is secular, the same hand, Abdul Razak, go ahead. Say. Another name for it. Give me just one other name for it. Now I'll ask the other person so they can also earn a mark. So I'll take. Um, Madam, Madam, please, you can say it is tautology. Tautology, very good. The tautology. You could also say if it's not circular and it's not tautology, which other description can you give to the same thing? The same crime, so to speak. Um, begging the question. Okay, so you know, let someone say something. They'll beat you up. <laughs> yes, it's called begging the first thing. You are begging the person, you are being tautologous, you are begging the first thing, or you are going in circles. There is a, a Latin expression for it that you will meet in a tent. Petitio principi. Okay. Don't worry your head over it. You see it in unit 10. That's so what I'm telling you now. The, all these labels describe repetition. So if you are arguing and you repeat your premises in your conclusion, then we say you are begging the question or you are being secular or tautologous. When you are defining, you say development is to develop the nation. That example I gave there. Or logic is studying logic or being logical in your logical deal. And we tell you, you are just begging the question or you are being tautologous. Okay. So on that note, if you did all that I've said, you have just walked through the first two units like water. Yeah, that, that's it. Nothing much to worry about. As I ask, your hand is up. Is there a question? I suspect that in my lecture two, I, I incorporated bits of unit three, metaphor and what have you, to help for clarity. Because if you show the link, then people study it concurrently. So it makes easy uh, absorption. You could check and see if you got that, then you have even covered some portions of unit three already. So can we do our assessment today, Weber, uh, excuse me, uh, from unit one all the way to unit two? I want to open it now and close it tomorrow. Is it feasible? Okay, I'll open it now and close it on Monday, God willing. Yeah, do you? Is this something we can do as a class? We are the only group for the, um, for the second, uh, for the level 200, 300 mop up. So we can have, we can have our discussions on how we want to proceed. We open the assessment today and hopefully close it on Monday. Is there a deal on units one and two? Okay, madam, that will be. That will be fine. Okay, thank you. That, that's my class rep. Eh? Yes, please. Yes, please, madam. So that I will know you. You will see okay. you later. Yeah. Okay. Okay, madam. Then we are done. So there will also be tutorial sessions for you. If you go for the tutorials or you come for our sessions, I think I, I should stress that. And we think that we are good with units one, two, and three. We have to, we can move on. You see, it's, it's an asynchronous lecture. So you read something ahead. Of course, you should be guided by which content you're going to be assessed on for that week or those two weeks. So you don't learn unit 10. First, you will be asked at the questions on unit one. Then the unit one, you can you don't know. But if you have covered that content, you can read ahead, study ahead, and bring those questions. That's what the question time is. It's not to come and repeat the content. So you can say that, oh, we are okay with unit one and two. I'm not, I am okay with unit one and two. Is it possible to ask a question in unit three? Unit four will not come. It has never come anywhere. It's just a navigation of our courses of campus. So that unit on humanity, social business is not coming, not in IE not in assignment one, not in final exam, it won't come. Then unit eight, since it, you are still part of the semester, we don't want to deviate too much from how we conducted it. 
level 100 currently, the ones who, did, so who will not do unit eight. So you can study all you like unit eight. You will not be assessed on it to be minded. So you don't use your energy there. So what? All these are on the course outline. No unit one, unit two, unit three. You may ignore unit four, or you can study just to know that, oh, this is the reason why we call this course humanity. And this why is different from the social science or social studies or whatever. Okay, so one, two, three, we skip four. They come to five, unit five will come. By unit five, when you look at it closely, those of you are studying alongside or listening to the lecture, you see that unit five is just an elaboration of unit one and two. And then some examples of uh, equivocation going on provocation you will see in unit three. So unit five gives you substance, fact and value will just be expanding on unit one. Explicit and implicit will still be expanding on unit one. Then there are the, the, the laws, the different connotations of the word law. We'll be showing you how people can be ambiguous or equivocal when they are using the word law. You would have met equivocation in unit three. So what? So unit five is, a, a part of unit one, two, and three. If you study those first uh, three units plus unit five, you are good to go. You have done half of the course. You will be assessed on that uh, for the mid sem. But before mid sem, you would have done unit uh, some assessment one, assessment two. Each one ten percent, ten percent. Then you do your mid sem thirty percent to to make your fifty percent and wait for the exam. That will be on unit six, seven, nine, and 10. No unit 11, no unit eight. So this should guide your study. And I'm using units because we have just one test. I have raised it about the emptiness time already. This study, you have the course half and you have the, all the lecture videos. We are treating you like database. You can't afford to get a receipt or a C, or a D, no, A, B plus. The worst now would be, anything below that for me, you didn't do well, and you can do it. If there is no other question, then I want to wish you well. So next Wednesday, my phone number is public. My, my phone number for WhatsApp is public. I respond to all questions. So when you send me a message and you say, no, please, can you add me to the site? I laugh. Sometimes I laugh. I don't know who, which of my students. So you have to indicate. Doc, my name is like Silas, uh, Silas, for example, is my classroom. When he says, Doc, please, this is Silas. Then for all the courses I teach, I will immediately know that I have one Silas who possibly is for level 200 and 300 second cohort or so. But if you just come and you write something, then it makes our work difficult because I will have to ask you, who is this? Then you say, I'm a student of which level? Then you say, level 100. Which course? Then you say, I teach philosophy. Okay, and all that. So you, you give some details. But if it is something that has already been addressed, I will lead you to the place. I, I say, please go to Sakai. Let me check the video. What did the video say on that? Just so that you get all the information you need, not just that particular one. Eldo dear, go ahead. Your hand is up. Sorry, I, I, it was a mistake. Eh? Okay, if it's if, if it was a mistake, then we are good. I see some stuff in the chat. Okay, someone says it was given, please. Excuse me. Let me see if I if I missed something. Okay, so so I'm a prince. I, I captured the question thing, the max thing. But if you don't come for the live, if someone couldn't make it to the live session, the person still is a contender for 100 over 100. They haven't lost anything. They just have to come and end it, either in assessment or a final exam or something. But those who come to earn something and be worth it. Either way, nothing, you don't lose money. It's, they are all aimed at helping you to make an effort. You can see the chat. Where the chat?
Did I miss someone's important chat? If there is anything, prompt me there. Okay. Laminu, who says I didn't? I've written down your name. I have it. They gave out the days, not time. Eldo, is it a tutorial? Please check the platform again. Yes, please. Oh, check the platform. Some of the things you should just send. I don't mm, Some of, maybe when you came onto the site, I don't even give it. They gave you the days and time. I even had to correct one of the time because it was, it was going to clash with the time you have with the lecture. You see, so I saw it myself. I'm on the platform with them. So maybe when you joined, it had already been done. And for such matters, you could just send a PM, a, a personal message to your classroom or any of the administrators. That is how you, you, you I mean, we, we should all conduct ourselves on a public space. Not that we can, hey, so the, 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 the lecture, with time it be with you know everybody's asking before long the main notice that was put there is missing in action and Eldo has come and she didn't see so some of the things even uh, your rep can send it directly to the person who just came I do that for some of the colleagues who came in I will just send content to them and we'll do fine okay I've given you a mark and I think that that should be it um, All right, so we can pause. I say pause because I'm going to open assessment now that you can do some work and go on to lecture three and go on to lecture four. When you finish and you want to enrich yourself more, you can look down there, you see the question and answers. If you go to the resource tool, I gave you all the links labeled. So if you don't want to have to go and even scan for playlists or whatever you find it, just go to your Sakai course site go into the resource tool and find video links for the course. You will see those that are lectures labeled. You just copy that link, paste into a browser, enter, and it will take you straight to this talkative woman sitting here, talking plenty for that specific unit you are looking for and to help you. If it is a, a question and answer session, it means that I was discussing with a group like you. And sometimes since we are, we are all students, some of the comments may resonate well with what you had in mind, then you can learn from them at your own pace. That's the beauty of it, you see. So you can look, those ones will be Q and A, question and answer. They wouldn't be labeled lecture. So you go and pick that. And for our discussion today, this one, some people will still feel they are losing something even after engaging the lecture and the videos and the whatever. So I'll copy this, but I won't post it on my channel. I'll put this link in your uh, what event in Takai, just for this specific group, because it will be repetition. If I lead, lead people to that, they will go and see plenty of videos on just one year, and some are just interactive session. So that is how we proceed, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we will all do fine. Okay, so thank you for your time. I said my number is public. I will mention it again. Even the slides have it. The first page of the slide will have my number. The course outline has it. I don't hide my number. My email is accessible to students because I want to respond to you very so far as you will respect it and not abuse it. I'm a mother of four, so please respect that. Happily married, doing a lot of things, but students are important to me because I think this is also a calling. So we give, we give our best when people respect that, that uh, whatever we are bringing to them, we do our best to also respect. So we'll have a good time until you have any questions. All the best. Take care. All right, thank you, Madam.